Okay, so if you fancy trying something a little bit more complex, what about the give it a twist box here? Now, this has been sized perfectly to fit a stack of 10 tea lights. I've just decorated the tea lights with a bit of paper in this one, but that's what it's made for, 10 tea lights. Now, the actual box itself is made from one sheet of cardstock, which is cut to 11 and a half inches square. And you can see, I can untwist it but it's got that real twist in it. And I just thought it was a little bit unusual. It does take a little bit of engineering and fiddling, so don't expect to get this right the first time, but it's worth having a practice because what fabulous looking gifts they make. Right, so I've got my cardstock cut to 11 and a half inches square all the way around. I'm working on the box, uh, the box lid side of the board which is where the handle is at the left hand side. Okay, so we're resting up against here and we're gonna use these score lines. First thing you need to do is with the edge up against the rest, got two and three quarters. And we're going right down the full length here. Two and three quarters, then five and a half. Uh, three, four, five and a half. Then eight and a quarter. Six, seven, eight and a quarter. And finally, your last score line is going to come at 11 inches, which leaves you that little bit of a gluing flap on the bottom, okay? Now, at the sides, we're going to score two and three quarters. So two and then three quarters here. And then to get that accurate, we're gonna go right to the other side and do eight and three quarters. So two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and three quarters. Okay. So that is all of the scoring done, all right? Now what you do from here is, first of all, burnish all of your creases. And then what you're going to do is on these end panels, you're just going to cut away all of that section there and then do the same with all of this section here. Okay. And then in each of the V's, we're going to cut out that full V there. So everywhere you've got your line of intersection, just cutting out the full V and then even cutting out at the edge there. Okay, I'll show you that again on the other side. So we've cut out the edge and then um, I need to make sure we do this one too, which I didn't do on this side. So just cutting right into the point of intersection from both sides. Now, I'm just gonna bring the cutting mat in so you can see this a little bit easier. What we're going to do is we're going to line up the corners and we're going to score diagonally across each corner. Now, you can do it with your big board, but you need to be very careful that you're actually working on exactly the same score line all the way down. So for example, if I choose my two inch score line here, I need to make sure that coming out of the other end, I'm coming out of the two inch score line. If you have an ultimate, It'll be a little bit easier for you because you've got far fewer lines you see if i line it up there and then i take this and line that one up here can you see so going straight across each one yeah so i'm going to find the same there find the little uh, indentation and mark across and this is what's going to give you the twist Now, the next part, you need to really, you know, give it a bit of time, pay attention, because you need to cut your aperture out of each part. Now, if you look on the one that I've got here, if I just untwisted a second, I've cut an oval aperture. Now, I actually did this with a die, made life a little bit easier than drawing around a template and cutting it out. 
So if you do have a die cutting machine, you would just need to cut an oval in all of the central pieces. Just twist this back into shape. Go. Um, and if I show you the one that I've done here, can you see there? So they need to all exactly line up along the top and they must be in exactly the central point on each of these boxes. Otherwise, when you have the twist, your lines just aren't going to line up, okay? So, put the board to one side. Now for the fun part, the gluing. Now, the easiest way to describe this is you just need to gently maneuver it into place, okay? So first of all, you can see where I'm gonna glue this down here. And actually, because of where my twist falls, I'm just going to cut off a little bit more of that gluing flap there. And I'll do the same at both ends. And it's just gonna make the twist that little bit easier. The double-sided tape down here, plenty of it. this into place. Now, you need to glue the, the base in um, and then put your tea lights in and then glue the lid in. So I am just going to do, again, just for simplicity, I'm going to use the tape pen here. You don't want glue on all four sides because your last one's going to stick into place. But I'm just going to take these one at a time right across there. Okay. Then put my tea lights in the centre. And this is where you've literally just got to twist the box into place. And there is no special way of doing this. You've just got to manoeuvre it one bit at a time. You can see it's starting to get it to twist there. Third panel, fourth panel. There we go. And what you'll find is it'll twist both ways, but one way it will sit in place. So you can see that's just folded into place there. And then it's completely up to you if you want to glue the top so that it makes a, a gift box, or if you didn't want to glue the top, you could always just use a little piece of Velcro on here. I'm gonna use a bit of tape pen to hold this in place. But you could use a little piece of Velcro on the top just to hold that in place so that the gift box is a, you know, you could take the candles out and back in. So you can see there how done in a little bit of colour, a little bit of coloured cardstock here. We've designed this one to use slightly less than 12 inch square cardstock. So you could start with a sheet of 12 by 12 here, not limited to A3 cardstock. And you can see how that just twists beautifully into place. And again, it makes a very inexpensive gift look really spectacular when you get it. Mm -hmm.